Uh, yes, indeed, it's actually a, a very good and a very important question, uh, and one which, in fact, all Muslims should be really taking into consideration. We are told by our beloved Holy Prophet Muhammad <laughs> that he will leave two things behind. He will leave the Holy Quran and he will leave his Sunnah, his practice. And if we follow these guidance, then Muslims will never go astray. Now, alhamdulillah, here we are, uh, 1500 years later, the Holy Quran is exactly the same now as it was in the time of the Holy Prophet Muhammad it hasn't changed, so it's still, that guidance is there. It's exactly the same as to the letter. Yes, yes, of course, yeah. nothing's changed at all. We now, of course, have still the Sunnah, the Hadith of the Holy Prophet Muhammad so all the guidance that was there at the time of the Holy Prophet Muhammad is there now. So it means then that we should not be astray, because the Holy Prophet has made it very clear if we follow these things, we'll never go astray. But unfortunately, when we look around the Muslim world, we see this is not the case. Instead, wherever you go, you see problems amongst the Muslims. Now, the Holy Prophet Muhammad has made this very clear, that no Muslim should abuse or fight or even kill another Muslim. And yet we see Muslims calling each other kufas. We see them uh, fighting and sadly even killing each other. So of this course. is the state of the Muslim world. And unfortunately, if you look at any Muslim country, you don't see any Muslim country practicing the true Islam as it should be practicing. And the main thing, of course, is unity. That this is fundamental in Islam, that there is one God, one brotherhood, one sisterhood. But and sadly, uh, the, obviously the West has put in this divide and rule, and the Muslims are very glad... Is it the West or is it the Muslims themselves? Well, whatever, that's what I'm going to say, yes. Yeah. I mean, they've accepted this, that they are quite happy to be divided. Mm -hmm. There was a time whenever the Khalifa said something, the whole Muslim world followed. followed. I mean, the Crusades, for instance, if you invaded one country, it wasn't one country fight back. All the Muslim countries fight back. But nowadays, one Muslim country is attacked, the other Muslim countries say, well, it's nothing to do with me, and they're bringing in the West to help them out through their own problems. Mm -hmm. So this is the state of the Muslim world, and we can see, wherever we look, that they're not following the guidance that's been given by the Holy Quran or by the Sunnah or the Hadith of the Holy Prophet Muhammad So the Muslims are astray. Now what should Allah do? Allah has given us the Holy Quran. He has given us our beloved Prophet, the Holy Prophet Muhammad We have all the guidance, and yet we're not following that guidance. Now should Allah then turn his back and say, well, I've done my bit, I've given you the guidance. It's not my fault if you're not following it. It's yours. Or should yeah. Allah help mm -hmm. us? Now, of course, we pray every day, Iddina Suratul Mustaqim, that guide us to the right path. So we're expecting Allah to help us and guide us. And this exactly is what the Mahdi is. He's the guided one. So Allah has sent us this guide. And he is only come to guide us back to the Holy Quran, to the Sunnah, the Hadith of the Holy Prophet Muhammad. He hasn't brought anything new. There's no need to bring anything new. It's all there, as the Holy Prophet told us. But what he's done is told us that we must follow that. Now there's a very clear hadith on this by the Holy Prophet Muhammad that when the Mahdi comes, then it's our duty that we must go to him. Even if we have to go across ice-bound mountains on our knees, we must go to him and do the bat with him. So this is the instructions and the importance which the Holy Prophet has told us that when that guide comes, we must accept him. Now this is up to now the Muslim world, that we have to look at this and realize that we need a reformer. Of course, many reformers have come uh, over the years, but they haven't achieved that unity or brought about the true Islam as it should be done. Now, if you can imagine, and it's been the way that some Muslims have uh, tried to elect a Khalifa, uh, Fazl, um, Arabia, Zia Yeah, there's historical Pakistan, examples, yeah, Now, over time. if someone elects a Sunni Khalifa, will the Shiites accept him? Or the Shiites elect, elect a Khalifa, will the Sunnis accept him, or the Wahhabis, will the Haliyadis, and so on and so forth. If man chooses a Khalifa, then it's not going to happen. Some Muslims will accept him, the majority will not. But if Allah chooses the Khalifa, then who's going to argue? And that's exactly what Allah's done. He sent the Mahdi and the Promised Messiah, and he's given him that responsibility. So one of the purposes of his coming is to create that unity. And now all Muslims should look into that claim, and yes. if it's true, accept it. And of course, again, they should now listen to what he's saying, and he is explaining how to follow the Holy Quran properly and the Sunnah Hadith. And so, as the Holy Prophet rightly says, we will never go astray. He hasn't brought anything new, he's just told us, follow these things. So this is the need of the reformer, and this is what Muslims should think about.